webinar format for our informational meeting for eighth grade students and their parents. It's so good to have you guys join us. Hopefully you didn't experience any technical difficulties and people are able to get in. So I'm gonna talk a little bit slowly <laughs> to get us started and make sure people are able to get in just fine. First, um, let me introduce myself. So you know who's speaking to you. My name is Brianna Abraham. Um, and I'm going to be going through the webinar with Mr. Green, who will introduce, I'll do introductions in just a second. But you should notice on the webinar format a place where you can type questions um, throughout the process as they come to you. And then we have the rest of our MST staff on hand who will be looking at those questions and trying to answer them as they come up as quickly as possible. If there are common questions or something that we think will be better to answer in person or, or verbally at the end. We'll do some question and answers at the end as well. Um, but that's the format for tonight. So this is the informational webinar for the Math, Science, Technology Magnet Program at Camas High School. And you'll see on the screen introductions, Mr. Morris is the program principal. He is the head principal at Camas High School. So he has wears a lot of hats, but he has kept us as he's risen through the ranks. And he is our leader. Um, and helps keep us organized and focused and pays the bills for us. So he's wonderful. Um, next, I teach principles of technology to the freshmen. I teach AP biology to the sophomores. And I coordinate the internships for the juniors rising up to be seniors, the research projects as freshmen and sophomores. So I work with all of our MST students from ninth grade through 12th grade year. So fortunately, unfortunately, they're stuck with me. Uh, Mr. Bohack, Alan Bohack is unable to be with us tonight because he also does wrestling and a lot of other stuff, but he will teach math um, depending on what math your students are in. He teaches ge some geometry, some accelerated algebra too. And then um, there's a new class he's teaching this year. I don't actually know that um, title there, but um, yeah. He does that stuff. I'm messing with my screen now, of course, and I can't see what's going on. Okay, no, sorry. Um, Mr. Green, who will also be speaking in this webinar to you, he teaches the sophomores their English, um, and he takes on the um, web site guru. He keeps the blog going. He makes sure our web pages are accurate. The application information that you'll find on the website, he does all of that. Um, so he is, is a great support in that. And um, he and uh, Jennifer Roberts are the only two that have been in it for the whole time, actually. Um, Jeannie Jarvis is our ninth grade English teacher. So he, she supports our freshmen their first year and English. And then Jennifer Roberts teaches AP environmental science to your freshmen. And then she also does massive support on the research projects that they'll do as, as freshmen and sophomores, which we'll talk about. And like I said, Sam Green and Jennifer Roberts are the two who have been in it since inception. Um, so they are the most knowledgeable and, and the longest running of us. So we love having them. Um, so I'm going to give it to Mr. Green. He's going to walk you through kind of what a student, an MST student might look like, um, and then give it back to me. Thank you, Mrs. Abraham. Uh, it's good to see everybody, and thank you. Oh, we forgot to introduce Mrs. Levy, our counselor. Um, Mrs. Abraham, I'll just go ahead and do this since I've got the mic now. Um, Leontina Levy is our counselor, uh, and she helps the students immensely with helping them get ready for college applications and scheduling. And you'll be interacting with her a great deal over the next six weeks or so as she is um, busy preparing for the uh, gauntlet that is uh, forecasting. But she's done such a nice job organizing this. It'll go very smoothly. And there we have it. All right, so a lot of people are very curious about the typical MST student. What are the characteristics? What do they look like, so to speak? And on this slide, there's a lot of words, and I want you to kind of focus on the highlighted words here, and we'll uh, break those down a little bit more in depth for you in a couple of seconds. But we are looking for students who are really uh, diverse in their interests and have all sorts of characteristics and qualities, but um, there's always room for growth for people. And if they don't yet possess these and they have a desire to move toward those, that's perfectly acceptable. So one of the things that we really like to uh, make sure is true for our students is that they have an interest in STEM. 
that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And uh, since this is a MST slash STEM program, if they don't have that interest, then this is probably not the program for them. And so make sure that uh, you truly have a desire to learn about the hard sciences and um, engage in the research process related to STEM learning. Um, we also, of course, as I mentioned, um, do a lot of our time focusing on the research process. And so uh, in that process, students learn how to develop a good research question and work with a team to try to answer this and test it and uh, peer review their work and others work. And so if they don't have that desire to research, that's also something that um, is kind of one of the things that we're looking for. So make sure that that is on your list. Um, and also, of course, uh, we, we like to have our students be ethical always in their behaviors and in the way they do their work. And that's uh, one of the things that we underscore in our program is doing original research and giving credit where credit is due. All right, moving on to the next slide. Um, one of the things that we also highlight in our program is uh, team-based research in the freshman year and uh, usually in the sophomore year, students are working on a small team of roughly three, maybe five at the outer limit, but we prefer to see smaller teams uh, trying to solve these complex problems. And um, it's kind of a play within a play because we're asking students to do the sorts of things that they will do in a workplace, work together and solve issues on the team, come up with norms and collaborate to persevere through and uh, find an answer to a complex problem. And so working on a team is another thing that students must be willing to do and work on and develop in themselves. Um, we also spend a lot of time working on presentation skills and uh, research uh, process skills. And so another thing that we're interested in is finding people who are interested in honing those skills and developing those and refining what they already have. And so um, we believe the program does a pretty good job of helping students realize that as a goal. Um, I think finally, this is the one that uh, sticks out for me perhaps is the ability for students to persevere and uh, demonstrate a little bit of grit uh, so that when they're faced with complex problems, they um, don't just shut down. They actually dig in and work with their teams and collaborate and reach out and find help when needed and um, see this through to the end, whether they get the results they wanted or not. And so those are the sorts of things that we're looking for in our students. Um, I'm curious, Lydia Lee, are you here in the room with us? Yes, I am. Hi, welcome, Lydia. Lydia is one of our seniors in the program, and uh, she's also the president of our uh, MST-ASB program, uh, among many other uh, roles and different things she does at CHS. Uh, but I'm just curious, how have you seen um, the MST program provide for you an opportunity to uh, work on developing those characteristics in yourself or um, anything you want to say on that? Well, first off, hi everyone. My name is Lydia, like Mr. Green introduced me as. Um, so I would say that being in Magnet has really allowed me to explore many different areas within STEM. And something I really gained was just hands-on experience, especially freshman year from building mousetrap cars and principles of technology to solar ovens and environmental science. And there's just such a strong emphasis on research projects. So you can really find what resonates with your interests. And over time, I've learned the ins and outs of not only researching, but how to present that research eloquently. And navigating my freshman year project was confusing, but I learned to be diligent in my efforts and continue trying until something worked. And that was really only made possible Possible by such immense support from the Magnet staff and school administration. Um, something else is just being in a relatively small cohort with students who similarly have interests pertaining to STEM, yet such diverse ways of thinking has taught me how to work with others and allowed me to make some of the best friends I've had the past four years. Awesome. Thank you, Lydia, so much. So, to answer the question, what does a typical MST student look like? Um, it's a very difficult question to answer because we have so many different students involved in so many different things. And so we have students who are involved in uh, activities like Knowledge Bowl. Here's a group of our first MST students winning the state championship in Knowledge Bowl back in 2010, as the trophy says up here, and um, exercising uh, that part of their brain in, in that program. We have varsity athletes uh, playing almost all the sports. And uh, sometimes people think they have to sacrifice everything to be a part of the magnet. And that's just not true. We wanna see well-rounded students and so do colleges. 
And so um, we encourage people to uh, have interest outside of what's happening in the magnet program, uh, as if we could contain that and uh, be very uh, involved in the outside world. Um, Reese Patak, uh, one of our uh, graduates is uh, shown here uh, at a poster fair. He did very well uh, embracing the science side of himself. And uh, he did well enough that he was able to get published as a student and get a, a co-author credit in the Journal of Immunology uh, when he was just uh, 17 years old. Um, pretty cool to see him do that. And that earned him a chance to um, eventually go to the White House and meet President Obama uh, back in, I believe, 2017, maybe 20, or not 2017, it would have been 2015. But anyway, we have students who are doing all sorts of things. Concert band is another one that students are involved in quite frequently, jazz band sometimes as well. And uh, moving forward, here we have some of our other graduates playing the other sports that um, represent, uh, again, just the wide variety of interests that our students have. Um, so yeah, we have no single look to uh, who our magnet students are. Laurie's Michael Sheth, she just entered graduate school um, working on, um, I'm not exactly sure, I can't remember, I get emails from so many students, but here she is in high school doing a multi-year internship in the uh, Coffin Lab at WSU Vancouver that uh, set her up well for success in college. Here's Hope, who's come back several times and uh, been able to uh, speak to our students and share her experience, but here she is doing gymnastics uh, when she was in high school. Um, and then our robotics team is another outlet. I think we've got somebody from the robotics team here tonight that uh, will speak on that a little bit perhaps. Um, drama is another outlet for many of our students. And there just is no single look uh, for who our students are and, and what they do and how they define themselves. And so uh, if you're wondering if you are that person, go back to that list of characteristics and see if it fits you. And um, probably more so if you're just willing to uh, be open to developing those things in yourself. All right, Mrs. Abraham, I'm gonna hand it over to you to talk a little bit about the schedule um, that uh, students will have over the course of their four years. Thank you, Mr. Green. So this is not an order of period number. This is looking more at the category of classes or the credit that the students will be awarded for the classes. So it's not their first period will be AP Environmental Science, but just to give you an idea of the types of classes they would be taking in the program. So when if when they're accepted for, as an eighth grade as a ninth grade student, excuse me, um, there are three classes that are cohorted as MST students. So that's Principles of Technology, Honors English, and AP Environmental Science. And those are the first three periods of their day. They'll move through all 32 of them from one class to the next. And then whatever math is their next in sequence, whatever PE and health they're assigned to, and then whatever elective they would want to take to fill their four, five, and six period day, that's what they would get in ninth grade. In 10th grade, we drop down to only two classes that are cohorted as MST students. Um, they are in AP Biology and their English class. And that is what will be their cohort, usually second and third period, but it could change. And then they'll have room for their math next in sequence. A world history is the, the social studies um, grade or class for grade 10, so AP World History or World History, they have room for two electives in their 10th grade year. That MST Research 10 is a CTE credit that they get credit for. It's something we put in their schedule to give them that CTE credit to support their research project, but it's not a class during the day. It's something that they get credit for, but Mr. Green and I help them and support them in their research in their biology and their English class. So it doesn't take up one period of those six periods, which is why they're allowed to have two electives that year. As a junior, the only class that they'll have is that MST Research 11, and it doesn't actually take up a period, just like MST Research 10. So once they move to be a junior or senior, there are no more cohorted classes um, as all the MST students take together. They can take AP Chemistry, regular chemistry, they can do physics, they can do a different lab science. For English 11, there's AP Irregular, the next sequence in math, US history, and the electives. And so there are 
they're able to diversify a little bit more as they become juniors and seniors. And there is no research project required for the juniors. I work with them throughout the, the year to find an internship. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. So that's kind of the focus of the program for their junior year. And then as a senior, they are presenting that research in a couple different ways. And again, no cohorted class, but they're able to follow the sequence of science and English and math and social studies and their interests while getting that CTE credit and being supported for their senior project, which their internship can fulfill some of those requirements for the senior project. So that's a look at the four the four years as an MST student. Um, we'd like to get some student voice in here as well. So I have, um, we have Aiden who is Stuart, who is a junior, current junior in the program. And we have Isla Crowell, who is a current sophomore in the program. Um, and I think you guys unmuted. If you speak, your, your picture should pop up on my little panel here. Yeah, can you hear me, Aiden? Yes. That's Aiden, right. and then is Hello. Isla, and there's Isla. So they're going to answer for us the question that how have you been able to, with the electives and looking at the options here, how have you been able to individualize your high school experience while still being in the MST program? So for me, that's really come down to uh, like my language credit that I've chosen for me, that's Spanish. As well, as my, as well as my art credits. So I've taken ceramics and 3D concept and construction so far. Uh, those have both been really fun and have introduced me to a lot of people outside the magnet circle, which allows me to you know, just diversify my friend group and you know see how other people are experiencing high school. Um, and I'd also say I've uh, individualized my high school experience through clubs and through sports like knowledgeable and cross country and track. And so it's kind of just the whole putting yourself out there and just seeing what you like. Thank you, Aiden. Yeah, for me, very similar. Um, I mean, it's only for the first two years, freshman, sophomore, where you have two classes that are um, three freshmen and it's like slowly withers out, but you still have electives. And so I know like language, um, I'm taking American Sign Language. Um, a lot of my friends are taking Spanish, so we kind of spread out there. Um, and then as well as clubs, I was, I'm the one um, doing the, on the first robotics team, I'm our president and lead programmer. And although it's technology, so part of the MST, it's a very different experience um, from being on MST versus the robotics team. So my interest in STEM gets to grow in different ways. And there are so many clubs at Camus that, um, wherever you are and whatever your interests are, you have so many options to explore. Um, I'm also in band, so um, exploring beyond STEM, um, also in the arts a little bit, a trombone player doing um, marching band, going to football games. I'm also part of wind ensemble, which meets during lunch. So there's plenty of opportunity at Camus to diversify your experience and figure out what you enjoy. Thank you, Isla. So essentially our students never sleep or eat, <laughs> but that's not true. And we highly discourage being overcommitted, but they are so amazing that they're able to do a lot of stuff, which is great. Isla, I wanted to ask you real quick, another question. Um, you are a sophomore, so you are right in those cohorted classes, right? What do you appreciate about having MST only classes those first two years of the program? So I know we, we did just talk about how um, being able to go into different classes and going to different clubs helped uh, find new friends outside of Magnet. And I think that's really great, but also having a core group that you've known for a while. So for me, I've known uh, a couple people in that class since being um, high cap in elementary school. Not everyone has that experience, but, and like it slowly morphed until it, we have, we're so close and it's such a good community that, um, that those two classes, um, both science and English this year are the only classes where I know everybody and we're all really comfortable with each other. So it's really nice to have a core community where you feel safer and more comfortable versus especially going into a new environment like high school, um, where it's nice to have that comfort class. 
Thank you, Isla. So we talked a little bit about what our students look like. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about what the program is and what the program offers our students. So we've talked about the research. That's probably the most different characteristic that we offer as an MST program, that inquiry-based project study. And both as a freshman and as a sophomore, they will do a year-long authentic research. And we walk them through the whole thing, from writing a literature review, to designing the experiment, to setting it up, getting the materials, analyzing the data. We go through statistics for that. They write a full length research paper. They do a poster. They present their research. So they practice those presentation skills. And they're all doing it in a group of three to four students usually. And so that collaboration and that teamwork and that leadership, all of those skills are really honed in those two years. And you'll see our panelists are just amazing and very articulate and able to speak to what that is and it's it's been a great um, part of the program that we really enjoy use of technology the first class they they have that principles of technology we cover a wide range of things we do some 3d printing we do um, arduino robotics and coding we do app development and design along with some basic physics and chemistry stuff where we do design projects for covering some of those those things in english they'll do video um projects and in AP biology we do electrophoresis and we get to transform bacteria into glowing bacteria um, pipetting techniques a lot of lab science engineering stuff that we try to get them introduced to so that they have uh, a good basis for moving out into college or, or career student teacher cohorts it, we accept 32 students freshman year and it's going to be those 32 students in those three classes and then those two classes and then with me working with them and the teachers stay in contact with them and we get to know them well. We meet together uh, as a staff every week to talk through as what are our students doing and how are they handling things and how can we best support them. So it is really this smaller family amongst the 22, 2300 students at CHS. And it's awesome when we can have students who have done, for example, we've had students that do aquaponics for their research, and then their juniors or seniors, and we'll have freshmen and sophomores do aquaponics projects. And we try to get them to mentor each other and work with each other. And since we have those cohorted classes, we have a group that uh, we know as the staff, we can connect students together and then we do social events together as well and so they get to know each other really well even from ninth all the way through 12th grade and so you hopefully you saw on the slideshow if you came in early there were some pictures of our social events um there's we do quite a few things most of the pictures you saw were pre-covid you'll notice we didn't have masks on but we have done overnighters with covid we did a midnighter so we didn't stay all night at the school but we stayed till midnight we play games and we hang hang out. Um, we used to do breakfasts for holidays in the morning with COVID. We haven't been able to do that, but hopefully soon we'll be able to start those back up again. Um, we've done barbecues in the park to end the school year. We've done escape rooms. Um, we're doing an ice skating event coming up, I believe. So there's a lot of opportunities for the students to get to know one another and the staff and develop that camaraderie even outside of the class. And it's, it's a really, really fun community to be a part of. Um, I think along with that, I'd like to ask Lydia to come back and talk about her most valuable research experience. So looking at that project study, real quick, I'll just say again, the juniors find a 90 hour research based internship that they'll do the summer before their senior year. And then they get to present that experience in multiple ways and use it as part of their senior project requirements. And so they have some pretty amazing things that they do in that summer. So Lydia, what's been most valuable about your research? So just going back to the origins of freshman year and that introduction into that research experience, having that early exposure really allowed me to have the time to foster my interests. I remember freshman year, I went from researching environmentally friendly construction practices to what I currently do now, which is looking at memory impairment in the elderly population, which is the internship I had at 
a local medical office in Vancouver. And yeah, my current research project has just given me the opportunity to interact with members of the community and find ways to improve their quality of life as well as their treatment. And without the time and experience I had in Magnet to hone my interests, I wouldn't have realized the passion I did harbor for geriatric research. And that's something that I really want to continue pursuing in the future. And so for that, I'm just really grateful to have been in Magnet and the vast research opportunities are just one of the many things that I've loved about my overall experience in the program. Thank you, Lydia. Um, Aiden, looking at the social stuff, what's been your favorite social event that we've done? I forgot to mention the Ashland trips. I was just going to say, by far, my most favorite event was the Ashland trip. We took fall I think 2019 uh, and I think we spent a weekend down there uh, it's a lot of fun because I came into the program knowing really only one other person in that program and so it was really nice being able to bond with them over the weekend obviously in close quarters we stayed in an overnight hostel I think in Ashland and being able to you know walk around the town I think we saw three great plays um, and that was by far my favorite. I don't know for Mr. Green or the other chaperones who went, if, if watching, you know, 30 some high school students for their weekend is considered fun, but uh, that bonding event was definitely uh, the best. And I also think the uh, overnighters are definitely second up there. Mr. Green's gonna chime in and I'm sure he's gonna say it's a highlight of his as well, right? Absolutely. I um, can't wait until we can get that back on the books. Um, we usually do that every other year. And uh, it becomes like Aiden said so eloquently, just this bonding experience for everybody. And um, my friends who teach think I'm crazy to go spend a weekend with students. Uh, but it is actually one of the highlights of the year for me, um, getting to know the students and having a chance to take in some culture and just have some fun on the road in the big yellow limousine that takes us down to Ashland. He means school bus because that's what we ride in. But it is great. It's been one of my highlights. And in fact, a student just asked me today, are we going to do Ashland next year? Because with COVID, we haven't been able to. When are we going to get to? So I said, talk to Mr. Green. That's his deal. So we'll see if that works. So now that you know about the program, how do you apply? Hopefully you're all eighth graders because that's who we take, ninth grade students. You'll submit a completed application and Mr. Green will show you exactly how to do that on the website. And this is what you're gonna submit. The application has several questions you'll fill out and complete along with um, a few short answer type questions. Teacher recommendations, we do ask for you to get three for sure math, science, English teachers, and then you get a fourth that can be a non-school related um, person if you want. They can also be in, in your school or be a teacher, but um, the math, science, and English is really important. And then there's an interest exam with an on-demand writing prompt. There's a math portion of the exam, which is more logic, basic thinking things with math, and then um, the English portion of on-demand writing prompt. And so you'll see on the next slide some dates for that. Um, and so we'll go through the calendar of what to expect and then Mr. Green will show us the website. So tonight, Tuesday, if you didn't know, 2 22, 22. And in fact, my students stopped and took a picture of the, of the clock when it was 2 22 this afternoon. It was like <laughs> crazy. Um, but that's tonight, the informational meeting. March 4th is when your application will be due. And like I said, Mr. Green will show us the website. And then March 8th will be the admissions exam. And I believe it's 3.30 to 7. And so you'll come up to the school and you'll take the, the tests. And if you, for some reason, can't make that, you're sick or something comes up, um, March 11th will be the makeup exam. And that's by appointment. And we really try to minimize March 11th and try and get everyone in there March 8th if possible. And then Hi. on March 30th. Can I interrupt for a sec? I'm absolutely. sorry. Um, I think some things got changed and not changed on the slide. So I just want to point it out. Uh, the, the admission exam, we're going to go four to seven because the schools get out a little later than the last time we did it. And we, we should still be OK with that. And then the makeup exam is on the 10th, I believe uh, now. So we'll update these slides to make sure they're accurate. Uh, I had a conflict with the 11th, so we, we had to move that one. 
Thank you. Well, and the 11th is a snow makeup day right now. So for now. Right. Yeah. Well, which is why we moved it as well. Right. So, so four to seven, March 8th will be the admissions exam, March 10th, the makeup exam, but by appointment only. And then March 30th, you'll get an email from Mr. Morris letting you know um, your status. And even though you'll know probably by the time you forecast whether you are an MST student or not, you're going to forecast as a non-MST ninth grader. You're not going to be able to put in the AP Environmental Science MST class or the Principles of Technology class. But Mrs. Levy, our wonderful counselor who takes care of all of our students, will adjust that schedule as needed and make sure you're in the right classes. So you don't have to worry about that going into forecasting. And now Mr. Green's going to walk you through the website and show you exactly where you can find the application and more information about the program. All right. So this is our website. If you want to get to this, you can just Google Camas High School Magnet Program and you should find that or you can see the address up here in the bar, chsmstmagnet.com. And uh, for uh, your initial foray into this website, if you haven't done so already, uh, I'd encourage you to just look through some of the posts that uh, we've cataloged that uh, kind of tell the story, uh, the ongoing narrative of what's happening in our program. And uh, we have uh, updates from our graduates, uh, our current students, and uh, information about admissions and all that kind of stuff that uh, might be of interest to you as you're making a decision about applying to the program. But I imagine for most of the students here, they're interested in the admissions process. And so if you come to the admissions menu and you jump down to the uh, student applicant section, click on the admissions FAQ, and this will take you to our admissions page that lays out the process for you. So the very first step, which you should do probably as soon as possible, like after the meeting tonight, is where you request a recommendation from your teachers. And we've got a form set up that automatically uh, will send them an email and a link that um, is going to give them a chance to just do a brief recommendation. This is not a letter of recommendation. It's just clicking boxes and maybe having a chance to write in a few uh, special comments about uh, each student that they are recommending. And so this is probably your first step in the process. And then next, we have an online uh, admissions process. And so you can paste those into a drive document or a Word document and spend some time wordsmithing those. There's no rush to get these in. There's no preference given to people who submit early. So we really encourage you to take the time to develop um, the best responses possible. Uh, it's not a huge part of your um, total admissions profile, but it is a significant part. So please take the time to uh, craft the best possible responses you can. Then of course, take the admissions test. And uh, all of that is again laid out here on our admissions page. We do have the correct dates down here and the times for the admissions timeline. We just forgot to update the other slide. Uh, there's also at the bottom of this, the characteristics from that slide that we looked at earlier and um, the eligibility slash admissions criteria. Uh, and again, we'll have a, a recording of this posted so you can go back and review the information that's been presented tonight and um, also take your time to go through the website. Um, there's a bunch of other links up here. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting to check out this magnet promo video from a few years back where students are answering questions, uh, many of which have been addressed partly tonight. But if you want to see a more in-depth response to questions like, are you on the fence about the magnet program? What should you do? Um, then you can get a chance to check out these student voices answering those questions. And uh, it's about eight minutes long. Um, speed controls, you can maybe get through a little bit quicker, but um, it's a really good overview of our program from the student's perspective. There's also a chance for you to access a sample schedule that uh, Mrs. Abraham went over and also maybe look at this program at a glance document. But there are all sorts of things here that you might want to explore and check out as you figure out about your decisions. Oh, a lot of people are interested about where our students are uh, attending after high school. And you can click on this magnet college map and it takes you to our Google map here that shows you if you zoom in the various places that our students have studied. And um, you can zoom in and you can click on each of these and you can see who from what class has gone to where. Let's just check on Pepperdine University and click and open this up. And it looks to me like uh, Brianna S. in 2013 went there and Chloe H. went there in 2020. Um, the California Institute of, uh, or this is a, rather UCLA. We've had three of our students go on to UCLA. 
and then um, clicking on some of these other links, if I can get them to work, um, you can see who else went to these other places. But anyway, um, it's interesting information if you want to see where our students have gone to um, all over the place, really. Um, so yeah, the website is a great jumping off point for you. And um, definitely, if you're a student thinking about applying, I'd spend some time here getting your uh, request for the recommendations going and uh, making sure, of course, that you use the correct email address for those teachers, uh, because otherwise it won't uh, notify them and it'll bounce back. Uh, you'll also get a uh, blind carbon copy or a carbon copy, at least, of um, the, the message that's sent out to your reviewers so you can verify who's on that list. So I think that is about it. And at this point, I think that Lydia was going to jump in and talk to us a little bit about um, somebody who's maybe on the fence and maybe unsure whether this is the program for them. Um, Lydia, would you take a gander at that question and let us know what you're thinking on this? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, like the magnet program isn't necessarily for everybody, but like Mr. Green was saying earlier, there is no one type of magnet student. I initially, I remember applying in eighth grade, I initially felt intimidated and that I wasn't really a STEM person, but magnet doesn't constrain you. It really opens up this wealth of opportunities to explore whatever does interest you. And there is a misconception about a certain type of person who should be in magnet, but honestly, if you have an interest in STEM and research, take the chance. Um, if you're like me and also love English and history, I promise there's no shortage of engaging discussions and discussions and projects that you'll get to experience in Mr. Green and Ms. Jarvis's class. And yeah, Magnet has become a major part of my high school experience. I've also had the freedom to explore interests beyond STEM. Magnet has given me leadership and community building skills which I now use as captain of the girls tennis team or as president of our school's National Honor Society. And one of the biggest reasons I would recommend applying is because of the community. Um, yeah, I initially thought that a cohort of around 30 people would feel suffocating, but it does give you this unique opportunity to get to know everybody on a deeper level, not only in class, but at these social events like the Overnighter and the Ashland trip. And you'll also get the unique opportunity to know upperclassmen. And if any of you guys join, um, I promise the upperclassmen are super nice and want to get to know you as well. And yeah, the amount of support also from the Magnet staff is really, is truly unparalleled. Um, they really want you to excel and they give you all the tools to do so. And even when it comes to balancing your schedule or just checking in on your mental well-being, Miss Levy really is there every step of the way. So if you're on the fence, don't let the fear of not fitting in with other Magnet students or not having the help you need stop you because it really is not an issue. All right. Thank you, Lydia. I think we're ready to move on to Q&A and wrap things up. Um, Mrs. Abraham, do you have anything that you'd like to say? Uh, just to really appreciate you coming and joining us for the webinar. It looks like the current questions that have been asked have been answered, but if there's anything else that we did not address or that you're just thinking that come up, we'll sit here probably for about five minutes and take any final questions that come up. Um, other than that, you're free to sign off and go ahead and get on that website and start the application process. I do want to, um, if I can, just expand on one of the answers on the testing. Um, the, the question was, do we have to register for the test? And the answer uh, was, no, you don't. I just want to let you guys know that um, if you put your application in uh, and your application is complete prior to the test, you'll receive an email and more detailed instructions about the testing day uh, location and what that looks like for me prior to the exam. So no pre-registration and more communication will come uh, once your application comes in. So thank you, Mr. Morris, for clarifying. I've seen a couple of questions coming through and I know people will answer them, but how many students typically apply to the program? How many are let in? We've had between 70 and 80 applicants in the last couple of years. We take 32 freshmen. Um, so I'd say 60 to 80 applicants and, and we take 32 freshmen. Um, so it's almost at the 50% um, level right now. Um, and then the, I see the question about? in there about exams, um, and I'm going off memory. I looked at them today, but I can't remember. 
I believe the, the math exam is 50 questions. And I believe there are about 70 questions on the um, verbal exam. And they have uh, an hour and a half for each of those? Yeah, hours? you get like 75 minutes for the verbal and about an hour, a little more than that, I think, for the math. Uh, but that info, again, will come out. And, and then there's that essay. As well. And that essay question for 45 minutes. So will the students be bused to the test since it's a four o'clock start time? No, yeah, we put four o'clock. Uh, last year we did a similar start time. Most kids got there right around four. Um, if you came to this meeting, uh, the little secret is I probably won't really start till about 4.15. Uh, but if we start showing up around four, then that gets people checked in. You can find your seat and stuff like that. So, um, you know, if I know testers are coming, uh, we'll, we'll pause for a little bit to make sure everybody gets there. Uh, but transportation is provided on your own. There's no bus transportation come up. Sam, do you, is a bibliography required for the research question? I just answered that in the okay, um, chat, but uh, it's not required. Um, there is a word limit on the research question. I think it's 500 words is the max. And so um, if you have room and it's put in there, it's always appreciated from the English teacher's perspective. And then if a student is high cap for verbal but not math, can they still do well on the test application in the program? Um, I, I believe so. Like there's a lot of support. We love students who are just really interested and curious about the world around them and are, are interested in working hard and having fun while doing it. Um, so I would not say to not apply at all. There was a question too about running start. I think Mrs. Levy was answering that. So make sure you're, you're checking your um, answers. Um, and it looks like all the questions have been answered then from this end. So we appreciate you coming. We hope you have a wonderful evening and we look forward to meeting many of you for the application test or, or entrance exam. Have a great night. Happy Tuesday. Thank you, everyone. Good night.